The next speakers tonight will be Allison Von Glenau and Lap Chi Kwong of Kwong Von Glenau in Chicago, Illinois. Allison is a Chicago native. She earned her Bachelor of Arts um, in Architecture from Barnard College at Columbia University and her Master's of Architecture degree from Harvard University Graduate School of Design. She is a board member of the Chicago Architectural Club and also a part-time professor of architecture at the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Lap Chi grew up in Hong Kong before moving to Seattle for his undergraduate education at the University of Washington. He then went on to earn his Master of Architecture degree from Harvard University Graduate School of Design as well. Um, Lap Chi is also a board member of the Chicago Architectural Club, and he is a part-time uh, professor of architecture at the Illinois Institute of Technology in Chicago. The office that um, Allison and Lapchi manage together, Kwong Von Glenau, is in pursuit of architecture for all to enjoy. And at the very least, the juries of competitions and awards certainly seem to be buying into their mantra. They are the winner of the first prize in the New York Housing Challenge 2017 for their project Tabletop Apartments, first prize in the Hong Kong Pixel Home Challenge for Towers Within a Tower, and first prize in Chicago Prize by the Chicago Architectural Club for Grand Lattices on Lakeshore Drive. Their work leverages simple and familiar and primitive shapes and forms to widely engage. Their ideas of smuggling architecture, which inserts specific, perhaps subjective, architectural interests and disciplinary agendas within more conventional architectural environments, and borrowing the familiar, which aims at producing a collective engagement and connection between people, each speak to the objective-subjective balance of their work. Systematic and logical, but also sensitive, specific, and personal. Please join me in welcoming Alison Von Glenau and Lap Chi Kwong. Thank you very much, Molly, for the introduction. And thank you very much for coming tonight. We're so honored to be here among the other winners and um, having participated in the League Prize, setting up the exhibition together with the other winners, and now hearing uh, each of us tell our stories of what objective means to our practice and how we build architecture. So it's been a really fascinating uh, week together here in the gallery, um, learning and working with the other architects in this room. And we also want to say thank you to Anne Rielsebeck and Katerina Flaxman for putting together this amazing exhibition and event. And um, we also want to thank our team in Chicago and say that it's also just an amazing experience now to be in this room looking out and seeing so many familiar faces, um, friends who we've worked with, and um, our mentors who have helped um, bring us up in this profession and supported us along the way. Yeah. The first project we want to share with you is perhaps my masterpiece. The project talk about how Allison and I begin. This project has really stuck with us, especially in how we communicate our idea. This is a selection of photos that I make titled I Miss You. Allison, Allison and I have just started, ten, just started dating 10 days before I interned at Wangshu in Hangzhou, China. I was thinking, how can I find a way to communicate with her to make sure that she will remember me? <laughs> Here, no, sorry. Here, I cut out I miss you letter of 36 inch board and place them in the park. People was looking at me and asking what is this for? After work one day, I was still in my model making mode. I quickly make a maze composed of wall forming the letter I miss you. Sometimes I need to find a way to do <laughs> two things at once. Here, I both drying my laundry and able to create I miss you. My clothes got pretty wrinkled. Here, while having breakfast, the traditional ham and macaroni soup, I use a fork and knife as a model tour to write I miss you. I don't know how I had time to do all this while I was interning for Wang Xu. This is the most time consuming one. I stack past the cup to make the I miss you. Here, while having dinner with a friend, I reformed the toothpick after dinner. The last one I will show Today is that I miss you tape it in the stair riser on Hangzhou campus designed by Wang Xu. I want to show you this because we learned early on that communication is very important. As we have started our firm for the last year and a half, 
we have continued to develop our communication language between Alison and myself, between us and our team, and as well as us with the board audience. Uh, so tonight, we want to share with you the two objectives of our firm. We were very happy to see this year's prompt objective, and we saw this as an opportunity for us to reflect on the past year and a, and a half, the work that we've been producing. So the first set of projects that we'll show you uh, belong to our category of smuggling architecture. These projects are generally smaller in scale um, and more intimate with their user. The term smuggling architecture for us has come to mean a lot. What we seek with smuggling architecture is to inject, inject architectural significance into topics that have typically lost their connection with the discipline. And as with the name smuggling, these projects seek to both conceal a hidden architectural agenda and at the same time engage with the user. We use this as an approach to design in order to foster a broader interest in architectural values as we believe in the significance of how architectural order can positively influence meaning and experience in everyday life. We came back, we came back to Chicago a year ago, a, a year and a half ago, from Switzerland where we have been working for Arkansas and Dermaron. We find it relevant to continue this research I had begun at the GSD on American suburban home. Believe this or not, this is the number one top selling home under 2,000 square feet in America. This is the plan of the top selling home. We understand that there are a lot of good features in the layout of this house. For instance, the kitchen, you have a single line axis to the garage in order to bring grocery more easily. The, mas the master bedroom on, the, on your left is located opposite end on the house of the children's bedroom on the right to give privacy. The dining room, kitchen, and living room are in the center of the house, making it a great space for gathering with the family and guests. This is a series of home plans ranging from 2,000 square feet to 8,000 square feet. Each of the different programs of the home are color-coded. Pink is the breakfast nook, dark blue is the foyer, gray is the garage, etc. The pattern between these homes are very similar. They are basically an aggregation of rooms. If you want a larger house, you add another room next to it. We wonder, is there any architecture order that can generate another set of patterns within the home? We decided to insert the architecture order of the envelope into the house. The envelope connects room to room to room. This exercise is not per se to design the best house, but to use an architecture order to influence the way of the everyday life within the home. From the exterior of this large model, the house outlook completely normal. The interior architecture order has not disrupted the exterior. Within the home, some of the rooms you may not have been noticed have changed that at all. It looks like a familiar suburban home interior. However, from the another view, the envelope appears and suggests how this room to room to room provide an architecture order, a way of living beyond a pattern of aggregations. This is the wheel from the other end of the envelope, where you can see how envelopes have manipulated the interior partition of the home. So as we continued to develop our research, we approached Volume Gallery in Chicago and asked them if they would be interested in exhibiting this research that we had been working on. And we were very happy when they said, yes, we're very interested in this. Um, but we also want you to create some pieces for our gallery that uh, spatially show what you're trying to achieve with smuggling architecture. So we loved the challenge and we're very excited um, to design for Volume Gallery. So on the left, um, this is a room where um, it will hold the research of this project. And on the right is where it will hold our objects uh, that address smuggling architecture. So to begin to understand how we would reinterpret smuggling architecture into a physical form, we revisited the model home that we had built and uh, we became very interested in all of the seams that the crown molding created once the enfilade had been uh, 
pushed through the home. And all of these interesting moments uh, began to occur. So we looked at crown molding and began to understand the, its significance within the home as both a symbol and its use. So first, the familiar profiles of crown molding present themselves as domestic artifacts within the home, while second, crown molding's true purpose within the home is to serve as a contractor's means to conceal a joint. And so from a selection of crown molding profiles, we created a series of crown molding artifacts that were liberated from their context within the suburban home. So we chose several familiar profiles, which you can see at the bottom of this screen and then drew them together to create a spatial object. The result is a series of four objects uh, situated within the middle of the gallery space itself rather than at the perimeter. And here in this installation, crown molding is no longer the cosmetic of the joint, but rather it's the familiar profile that has become the spatial construct itself. This project is our first commission since we began our office 18 months ago. This is an apartment renovation in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very similar to New York in many ways. Every square foot, you could even say inch, is valuable. Storage often becomes the greatest, greatest issue for the home. When we begin the project, our client gave us two inspirational words for the, what they want, clean and tidy. In the existing plan of the apartment showing here, storage is achieved through a collection of aircraft furniture pieces, squeezing storage space whenever they need, can. We decided to reform all of the storage into a single entity within the home. Rather than rely on part to hold storage product, the storage tea organized divide all of the space within the apartment. This is a thick wall with a storage accessible on both sides, as well as threshold each of the room in the apartment. The insertion of the storage key perhaps seems very bold from the physical model. A, it looked like an imposing object and you probably would not say has been smuggling into the home. However, at the eye level, the T storage just become another wall within the apartment. The texture of standard black plywood with the division of the shelving system provide what the clients need. Smuggling is not something obvious, but rather smuggle an architecture order to enhance what the clients need. Uh, so this next project we'll show you is a single family home we're currently developing in Chicago. Uh, here you can see it's on a typical site in Chicago uh, in a residential neighborhood, although it's on an alleyway um, leading to the back, um, which is also a typical lot type of Chicago. Um, since a home would be located on an alleyway, we quickly understood that we would need to address privacy, um, yet also capitalize on the additional facade that could bring in light along this alleyway. As a form, the house clearly belongs to the traditional typology of the single family home. There's a pitched roof, and in the city of Chicago, this is also built up on the traditional five foot basement. However, within the home, the traditional sectional experience of living spaces like kitchen and dining, which are on the ground floor, and uh, kitchen and living are on, sorry, and bedrooms on the second floor, we instead flip this to maximize privacy and increase the amount of daylighting. Here on the ground floor houses the three family bedrooms, which are all accessed off of interior, this interior courtyard hallway which faces the alleyway, while the bedrooms face the adjacent apartment building behind this wall. We use this interior courtyard as more than a hallway connecting rooms. Rather, it is a, it is a space itself to be used as a way to connect all the spaces of the home together under one roof. Above the bedrooms is the open space of the home, the kitchen, the dining, and the family room. And here, we use this conceptual model to show how the courtyard serves as a buffer zone to distance the private spaces of the home, both the bedrooms and the living spaces from the alleyway, yet bring in plenty of light. Again, the conceptual model showing the more opaque downstairs private spaces where the bedrooms are held, and the upstairs open areas where the family can gather together. 
And again, the same concept of the open exterior, although this is now facing the adjacent uh, building where the bedrooms are facing a brick wall and having a private space. Upstairs, uh, it bridges between the open alleyway and the adjacent neighboring building as a very urban condition. And looking through this, you can see how the open space of the exterior, of, of the interior, um, bridges the two sides of the site. By inverting the typical domestic section in this project, we seek to smuggle a new way of living into this traditional envelope. And our second objective that we would like to share with you is called Borrowing the Familiar. For us, the familiar speaks to the collective, to memory, and to a common understanding. There is a legibility and specificity to the familiar. The familiar is relatable, we get it. The familiar takes away the need for acquaintance because we are already familiar. The familiar for us is form, primitive figures, primary geometries, or an open circular space that people innately know is a space for gathering. Borrowing the familiar stems from the belief that architecture should connect to the people who use it. And for us, we borrow to share. This is our competition design for the ADA RAM for San Antonio City Hall. In the beginning, we do not want to design just a RAM, but to create a place for people to gather in addition to a device that bridges ground level to a city hall entrance that is six feet above grade. We use a trapezoidal shape to accommodate a RAM that met the ADA slope requirement. From this new point, we cut out a circle, create a new plaza for people to gather. The circle is a familiar form that everyone recognized as a space for gathering. As you have probably noticed, we make a lot of models. We use this to test our design intuition for how people would use space. Here, we were encouraged by the familiar form and how you would foster a space for people to come together. The next project is last summer, we designed a gate, gateway for Chinatown as part of the open call competition. Instead of coming up with a new form for a gate, we overscale the tra traditional moon gate and place in the Manhattan Chinatown. This form set itself apart from your urban context along Canal Street. A staple of the Chinese architecture, the familiar form of the moon gate threshold captured a lush urban landscape as well as a commotion of community within the circular frame. The enlarged form of the gate become the new yet familiar icon for the area. Tower within a tower is our first prior proposal for a housing competition in Hong Kong. Majority of people in Hong Kong living within a tower. Instead of saying I live in this tower or that tower, we were thinking how about each person or family can say they have their own tower as a way for the individual to claim the identity within the city. Apartment units are typically inhabited as a horizontal slide. However, we thought what if, what if we stack the space of the apartment one atop the other vertically, so that each unit becomes their own tower. Three basic unit type compose tower within a tower, a studio unit, one bedroom unit, and a family unit. Each tower unit is unique in their proportion, organization, and color, using a familiar tie work and color of Hong Kong. Eight units are situated in the nine, sorry, eight, eight units are situated in the nine grid with a central core. When the unit aggregate next to one another, they produce public outdoor space for community to share. This become more than a corridor, but the space for the community of the residents. So the last project we'll show tonight is our proposal for housing in New York City. Um, here, the call for proposals asks participants to rethink how people can live together in New York City and more densely. So for us, we were not interested in just trying to create a solution that packed in more people, but we were interested in creating a space that reflected a new way of living that is both individual and collective and a new way to share space together. So we began uh, with the unit itself and we used a system of modules based on the form of stacking tabletops. Whether a round, square, or rectangular table, these forms are very familiar across cultures. Um, and we use this as an infrastructural base 
um, for our tabletop apartments. And borrowing this familiar form, this easily um, was able to be used for the unit itself. The tabletop became the space of the apartment, and the legs became the infrastructure uh, to hold up the unit. And then sandwiched between these two pieces uh, was where the unit would be held itself, and it would negotiate the space between the tabletop on top and the tabletop on bottom. And this modular geometry is based on a 25-foot grid, which was able to flexibly accommodate the various lot types of New York City. And so here, uh, this is a single wide unit on a typical Manhattan block, 25 uh, feet wide by 100 feet long. And here we created a four-story walk-up. And then here, this is a tower where we aggregate the modules horizontally and vertically uh, to create cascading balconies. Uh, most importantly for us, in addition to the visual accessibility of this project, is what brings the units together. It's in this space where housing is not just about creating spaces for the individual, but also for a community of residents. So rather than a typical corridor that gets you from point A to point B, here the units, the space between the units is used for both circulation as well as a space for gathering. So this is one of our favorite images that we've created, where we created this, this vertical courtyard where residents can spend time together to create community and share space together. And outside in the gallery is our 10 foot long model that describes this project of the tabletop apartments. The two, the two acts that we share, smuggling architecture and borrowing the familiar, these are not hard and fast rules for how we design, but these are the two attempts that we are using to make architecture accessible to a broader audience so we can enjoy architecture together. Thank you.